Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hi, guys. What actually happens in the House of Commons? I've been really interested. Be kind of, again, I only watched one video uh, about the House of Lords. I think I went a little bit too far in, in that. My gen general immediate reaction, you know, it was one video, and I can't base everything off of one video, but I'm trying to learn more about this stuff, so let's do it. House of Commons. Again, one channel, okay? I'm going to keep trying to, to watch stuff. Uh, to get an idea of what it is. And maybe, maybe read stuff. I know. Crazy. It's early, you know? It's like... So from time to time, we ask our it's noon. backers what video they'd like to see us make. We offered them a video on the speaker that you all clearly want. Another one on why the House of Commons Order. always seems so unruly. Another topic which has been greatly requested in the comments section. The poll results are good news for everyone. Ultimately, most people voted for us to cover both topics. So here we are with the first video, Why the Commons is so unruly. Stay subscribed as we'll be releasing the speaker video very soon. I am you want to curious because there is always uh, like back and forth banter whenever anyone's talking of like, here or like, boo, like, you know what I mean? Video topics in the future. I should have turned on the other light. Us on Patreon from as little as $3 a month. The last few weeks have been pretty insane in the UK. You've probably seen the inside of the House of Commons more than ever, with TV news and your favourite YouTube channel reporting on it constantly. For those it's who are familiar with years the ago. UK system of governance and the procedures of the House of Commons, it could all seem a bit weird. So as requested, here's why the House of Commons is so unruly, and why MPs <laughs> often look more like badly behaved school kids. First, we thought we'd give you a brief introduction to the House of Commons. Forgive us if this is super basic to you, but we thought we wanted to start at the ground level. The House of Commons is one of the chambers which makes up Britain's Parliament. It's the section of Parliament where the elected officials, or MPs, sit. They make law and generally run the country. This is oh, so Jim Hacker is one of these is one of the guys in the the yelling like order. Room, like he's one of the guys on either side. That's what an MP is. Be confused with the other house, law, section of parliament where the elected officials or MPs sit. They make law and generally run the country. This isn't to be confused with the other house, the House of Lords. The House of Lords is also within the Palace of Westminster, but this house is unelected and is generally responsible for checking that the laws passed by the House of Commons are fit for purpose. We've made a video about how bills pass, which you can watch by clicking the link in the description. Anyway, the main way to distinguish between these two houses are the colours of the benches. The House of Commons is green and the House of Lords is red. The colour scheme dates back 300 years and is significantly older than the current House of Commons itself. The current House of Commons was only actually built in the late 1940s and early 1950s, after a bomb hit the original one during the Blitz. A lot of the furnishings came from other Commonwealth countries. The Speaker's Chair came from Australia, for example. Anyway, so now we've had a brief history lesson on the House of Commons, how does it actually work? Well, the person in charge is known as the Speaker. Currently, the Speaker is the rather infamous John Burko. As I mentioned at the top, we'll dive deeper into the Speaker in our dedicated video. So he, so the Speaker is essentially the... Like debate mass, the, the debate, like the referee. But here's just a taste of who they are. Their role is to manage debates and ensure that rules are being followed. They also decide who speaks, as well as deciding which amendments are selected. As such, the speaker should be impartial, and once they're elected, they should resign from their current political party. This creates a rather interesting and unique situation. This is because the speaker is elected to represent a constituency. For John Burko, it's the constituency of Buckingham. Although Burko won his seat for the Conservatives in 2005, once he became Speaker, he lost the ability to vote on motions, except in the event of a tie. This means that since then... I mean, just because you shed your political identity doesn't mean that you don't still have the, the same personal opinions about politics as before. But I, I'm sure the... The idea is to act impartial, but okay, uh, I'm I'm elected. I'm, oh, I'm not part of a party now, but I'm gonna bring up only 
things from the party I was from. Like, then I'm not sure if that happens. ability to fully represent happens. his constituency. Some may argue that this is okay, because if his constituents were seriously annoyed by this, they could vote him out in the next election. And yes, usually this would be the case. Okay. However, there's a long-standing tradition that opposition parties don't field candidates for the constituency of the Speaker. This means that for the last three elections, the only major political parties standing against Burko were the Greens and UKIP. Anyway, that's briefly the role and controversy surrounding the Speaker. Now to explain what happens in a division, or as you might more commonly know it, a vote. Firstly, in the House of Commons, the Speaker asks, as many as are of that opinion say I, and of the contrary, no. The question is that Amendment H be made. As many as are of that opinion say I, of the contrary, no. How can they tell how many is it like uh is it like an a is it like an applause meter like that the loudest wins sorry I, Division! Clear the lobby! I love him from the comments it seems like some of you were confused by this line when he says I he means the slightly archaic term for yes not the organ you see using as many as all that opinion say Thanks. I and when he says no's, he's referring to the people who voted no. The no's. Ooh, the no's to the left. Thanks, man. 391. So the no's have it. The no's have it. I'm not. Not the... If they have to count, then what's even the point of asking eyes or nays, no's, you know what I mean? It seems sort of theatrical. So the no's have it. The no's have it. I'm not. Not the, yeah, you get it, the speaker's not obsessed with facial features. Order. The question is the main motion as amended. That is to say, as amended by Amendment A. The question is the main motion as amended. As many as are of that opinion say aye. Aye. Of the contrary, no. no. If neither Sounds side like audibly job. win, then the speaker calls for a division. This is where he says, division, clear the lobby. Division, clear the lobby! At this time, a button is pressed by the principal doorkeeper that sets bells ringing throughout the parliamentary estate. Wait. That bell tells MPs that they have eight minutes to get to the lobby to vote. Just an interesting point to note, as the bells are ringing, screens also display what is being voted on and are accompanied by a green background as the vote is happening in the House of Commons. If it was happening in the House of... I feel like these p sort of political jobs, like in the House of Commons or maybe Lords or um, in the US, like being a, a senator or a, a congressperson, person, especially if you're in the minority, because you're going to have you just send a proxy to say no at, at all times or, or whatever it's it's like i'm a, it's gotta take some guts and a certain kind of person to like have your public face out there and um like vote for me and everything but i feel like that must be the hard part i feel like once you get in like your entire job you probably get paid over 100 grand a year it's just like Or no, or or yay, or, or something like that. You know, I mean, guys, I I don't need to tell you. Uh, politics over here is is nothing to brag about. Uh, but just and why not? If it's um division, division, clear the lobby. Like, if they're just doing that so that you have eight minutes to go and vote, why not just each have your own pad in front of you? Like an electric pad that that simply like has a yes or a no. If if you, the whole point is to clear the lobby so you can vote and come back in, why not just vote at the seat? Of lords, it'll be a red background. Am anyway, I sounding too if stupid? Don't I get there in time. The door is locked and they cannot vote. If they do make it, then they can vote. The UK still. Wait, what? Lords, it'll be a red background. Anyway, if MPs don't get there in time, the door is locked and they cannot vote. What if you're in like the so you? <laughs> if they 
If they do make it, then they can vote. The UK still use a lobby system for voting. On one side of the speaker's chair is the lobby for those who vote in favour, and on the other, there's a lobby for the people who are voting against. In order to vote, an MP must physically enter either one of these lobbies. Those verifying the vote are known as the tellers, and are usually the whips of each of the parties. They have a long list of MPs and check to see who has voted and which way they voted. Once they've verified the votes, they then proceed. You don't want the opposition to vote against it, so like when the bell goes off, the rain, you just like box out so they can't get through to vote. It sounded funnier in my head, and it sorry. Proceed to announce it to the house. Order! 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 The eyes to the right, 242. The nose to the left, 391. The eyes to the right, 242. The nose to the left, 391. So the nose have it, the nose have it. Unlock! So when the speaker shouts, division, clear the lobby. He's announcing the vote, which is known as a division, because MPs literally divide between the two lobbies. Division! And he's also saying that the lobbies need to be cleared. Clear the lobby! So that no one besides MPs are in them, confusing matters. Okay, so now we've explained voting, we'll answer a few other commonly asked questions about the House of Commons. Why do MPs bob? This happens when an MP wants to get the attention of the Speaker. As the speaker gets to decide who speaks. Oh, so it's like the equivalent of like raising your hand in class, but like you just don't get you don't get picked on and MPs will try and get their attention of the speaker. As the speaker gets to decide who speaks, MPs will try and get their attention. To do this, they bob. It's the equivalent of raising your hand to speak in class. Why is the House of Commons so this. unruly? Actually, this is the title of the video, so maybe we should have got to this one a bit sooner. Well, firstly, the House of Commons is small. Despite there being 650 elected MPs, the House of Commons can actually only seat 427 MPs. This means that there's a much more intense atmosphere. The geography of the House also Why? contributes to this, with the government and opposition being literally facing each other, meaning that both sides can yell across the room at each other more easily. More importantly though, is that clapping is banned in the House. This means in order to voice your opinion, MPs tend to shout, hear, hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something which quite easily turns into a dreary groan when so many MPs decide to shout it out. It How is that better than clapping? It might sound pretty awful and stupid, but when you can't clap, you're not left with many other options. Prime Minister! Yeah. Itself. Long time to go today, subsequent days. Keep calm. The Prime Minister. Carry on. What are the lines on the floor? In front of the front benches, there's some lines in the carpet. This is where MPs must stand if they're on the front benches and want to speak. They're not allowed to stand in front of this line. The distance between the two front benches is about four meters and is said to be the equivalent of two sword lengths. Unfortunately, MPs aren't allowed to bring their swords into Parliament. So before each debate, they must leave their swords in the cloakroom and collect them after. Which, as you can imagine, is quite inconvenient sometimes. In can I just say one thing? Hey, that, that there's a part of me that... When... Like, I, I had like a, a thought, epiphany. The... When you see a country that's able to do this and get business done, well, you know, as much as any government, right, obviously Roblox, but, I mean, th this is, uh, you know, a democracy, a republic, and just, there's, there's kind of a pride that, that should come in when you, if a country that is so subdued and and everything calls you out for it. I mean, that country is very likely less comfortable with political, healthy political confrontation. And so when you're a society, a de democracy, where you can, you clearly have two sides fighting each other, and like, 
calling out and and still being able to carry on i mean is that not exactly what democracy is all about is is so that kind of if you look at it that way it's it's very respect respect of pride you know what i mean like that there's uh, so, like the fact that you, you get what I mean, right? That that just so like it. It shouldn't be an embarrassing thing. It should be like, yeah, this is what it looks like when you have open debate. In front of the front benches, there's some lines in the carpet. This is where MPs must stand if they're on the front oh, the sword. benches and want to speak. I'm gonna rewatch this part anyway because I was kind of thinking about that while I was looking. So. This is where MPs must stand if they're on the front benches and want to speak. They're not allowed to stand in front of this line. The distance between the two front benches is about four meters and is said to be the equivalent of two sword lengths. Unfortunately, MPs aren't allowed to bring their swords into parliament. So before each debate, they must leave their swords in the cloakroom and collect them after, which as you can imagine, is quite inconvenient sometimes. In fact, this is something we cover in a couple of our videos. Who sits where in the House of Commons, and 11 weird facts about the House of Commons. Yeah, I know. Back in early 2018, we made a list video to try oh, yeah. and get some views. Let me click on it. Anyway, them. if you want us to cover more about the House and how the UK government works, let us know by liking this video and commenting what you'd like to learn. Make sure you... Uh, everything. Um, I'm gonna watch a bunch more of these. Alright, love y'all. Hope you're all doing well, and I will see you next time. I think I was really annoying that video so sorry about that uh just kind of pausing a lot and making stupid little smirky jokes thinking i was funny when i was just disrupting the video but the biggest point is the one i thought of it at the end there is that that's what a healthy legitimate democracy republic right should look like if no one's ever fighting then that's kind of a hint that something is is kind of up, you know? Anyways, see you guys next time. Bye.